Hello, hello, it's Amy again from Automation Amy. This is the third video in a group that we've done. The first video was about using the basics of Airtable, <coughs> excuse me, and the second video uh, started getting into how to link tables together. And now in this video, we're going to go a little deeper and start working with some sales data. So, um, in the first couple of videos, we worked on this client contacts and client companies table. And I've gone in and filled out some more details here since we did that video. And I've got everybody linked up uh, with a company, a fake company. And now we're going to get on to the sales part. So the client contacts and client companies is really, uh, this is actually, you know, a we're going to say this is a base for your company. You're putting in your client contacts, your client companies. But now when it comes to sales, of course, your clients aren't making sales for you. Your own staff is making sales for you. So we need to do um, a little bit of tweaking here to make this work right. Because uh, right now these names are related to clients and that's not who's going to be making the sales. So the first thing we need to do is make a new table and it's going to hold our sales staff. So we're going to call this, uh, just go with sales staff, let's just move this over here and we're going to put in some uh, names, uh, Tim Thumb and And this can be, um, since it's internal, you know, you can have whatever you like in here. Maybe you have a hire date. We'll put everybody's hire date in here. And this can be uh, useful if you want to see, you know, how many sales somebody has done since their hire date compared to when you started selling a particular product. So we'll put everybody's hire date in there. And... Um, we won't bother, you know, actually filling out other details, but you get the idea. This would be um, details about each of your uh, sales staff that you have for your company. So now what else we need is a products table because we're going to put in our individual products that we're going to be selling out of our company. And what we can do is come in here and just grab, uh, let's see, so we've got these four things basically are what we're going to be using for demo. And we'll just paste these in. And now we have these all here. And let's just call this product name. Okay, and we're going to be selling these for these prices. So let's go with uh, price, make this currency, and then we're going to paste that in. And then let's assume that we want to track when we started offering this product. So maybe we call this, um, we'll just say start date for lack of a better name, entry date. I don't know what you would call that, but we'll call it start date. And Let's say we started selling these you know, here, this was here, and then this one is going to be here, and this one was started on the 1st of January. And then you could also, if you wanted, put an end date. So say you stop selling a particular product, you can make sure that it shows um, that as well. So I'm not going to worry about filling that in, but all of the details about your particular products would go in this products table. Um, another good one would be like a description of what it is. All right, so now we have our sales staff, we have our products, and we have the sales data that's in here. So we need to go ahead and just kind of, we're, since we're backing into how this is working, we need to just adjust this a little bit. So since this is going to be actual sales, we don't need to worry about this field. So let's just go ahead and delete it. And what we want to do here is we're going to link this description field that we had um, originally over to the products field. So let's change this 
and we're going to link to products. We're going to turn that off. And then now you're going to see it's connected as a link over to the products field. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in here because um, you can make some comparisons. Say somebody sold an email bundle for an amount that's different than what uh, the sales price was. You can see that and question it and see, you know, is it because they were offering a discount or is it because they're undercutting your prices when they're making sales and and they think you won't know about it, but you will because you'll be able to see it in here. So the next thing we want to do is we want to set our primary field to be something more meaningful. Um, this is what's going to be displayed everywhere, just like you saw over here in client contacts. You see the company name is displayed because that's the primary field in the companies table and the contact name is displayed like this because that's the primary field over here in the client contacts field. So we want to make this something meaningful. So we're going to duplicate this field because we're going to keep uh, Actually, you know what? Let's not worry about duplicating it. Let's just add in a new field and link it. Uh, let's see here. We're going to call this salesperson and let's link it over to our sales staff table. And we'll just put in some, uh, you know, some fake records here. These guys made these. Uh, they made these. And then this person made these sales. So now we're linked to who made the sale, uh, what they sold, and let's just change this to products sold just so we're clear on what's happening. The date the um, product was charged, the transaction amount, the fee, and what the total amount was charged. So now we want to make a meaningful primary field. So in this case, um, Usually I like to do, unless it's something like client contact or company, uh, I use formulas a lot for fields. So we're going to call this, um, I don't know, sales ID. And we're going to change this to a formula. And what we're going to do is take two fields and um, join them together. So we want to know what product was sold and by who. So we're going to use this concatenate formula and that just says put two fields together. So the first field we want to show up is product sold and if you start typing it you'll see it there. And then to connect it we use this ampersand field and then we're going to put in quotes what we want to join. It can be a space like that. It could be a dash. Uh, as long as you have the ampersand field before and after it'll connect. And then we want to show the salesperson. So let's hit save. And now you can see this will show up as our primary field. So it's showing uh, what was sold was an email bundle and Tim Thumb sold it. Same thing all the way down the line. So you could do this however you want it. You could flip them and have Tim Thumb first if you want and then email field. Um, but this now will make a uh, meaningful display of what it is that's in our uh, sales data here. All right, so now, now that we've got this over here, you can see that the sales data has pulled in and it's showing all of the sales that Tim made and it's showing all of them for Jesse and Christy. So you could see here, this is the primary field we just made. So if you want it to show something uh, a little different, maybe you want it to say um, uh, email bundle and the date that it was sold. You know, we could do that. Let's do... Uh, instead of salesperson, we want uh, date charged. Date charged. Okay. And see, it'll automatically change it. Now, with the date fields, um, you have to do a little bit of formatting so it won't show this uh, craziness. We won't do that on this video, but um, let's just switch it back just for the sake of not having to do that part just yet. So let's change this back to salesperson. But just that easy, you could switch it and it's no problem there. So now over here in products, you can see who um, sold them and because it's linked. And then I like to just kind of come in here and rename my fields uh, so it's very clear. And then 
over here. Uh, instead of sales data, it's uh, products sold. All right, so now let's add some extra fields in. Right here, we want to go ahead and count how many sales were made of each of the products. So let's uh, use this to make our row height a little taller and make it easier to see how many are in there. So we're going to add a count field here. And it's going to count uh, the number of salespeople in here to know how many of the email bundles were sold and so forth. So let's call this uh, total sales field. So now you can see this is accurate because there's five here, three here, and one here of each. <clears throat> so what we can do is create a new view. Uh, total sales by product and we'll just hide all of these things and you have this right here uh, we can hide this one too and then um, you can uh, sort them you know by the highest number of things sold and you can start to see some insights on your information so now let's go back over here to the sales data table and we want to pull in a lookup field that's going to tell us what the actual price of the product is supposed to be. So let's go lookup. Um, we're going to call this product price and it's linked to products sold because that's the table that has the information about these products and we want to actually pull in what this price is and we know it's going to be currency so we can go ahead and format that and now it's pulling in the price of each of the uh, products sold here so let's just change some of our data so you can see uh, what I mean about making a comparison so say let's make it so that Tim sold uh, a product that should always be $19 and here we've got him selling it for uh, $14 let's just round that Oops. and we'll make this $2 fee so now this was 16. So if we do some comparisons here and we could put in a formula field and let's say uh, uh, net difference maybe and this is going to be a formula field and what we want to do is take the product price and we want to subtract the transaction amount of uh, what they charged for it and see if there's a difference um, and we could format this also as currency and here uh, we know that the net difference should always be zero if if the salesperson is selling your product for the price that it's supposed to be um, but here we can see that there was a difference of five dollars in the product price in the transaction amount so this can be flagged um, to say you know why was the product sold for five dollars less than it should have been um, maybe you even have a some kind of um, you know special uh, code that you've given out to salespeople to give um, certain customers uh, a pricing discount but you see that there was no code entered and there was still a product difference you could say did you just forget to put the code in um, and that's a training opportunity to, to make sure that they're putting the code in or did they uh, do a price break without giving the customer code which means basically they're selling your products for something they shouldn't be um, so you can even put you know a status field in here um, if there is a difference let's see let's put uh, you know what we need to actually change this sometimes I get my amounts wrong here we should do it this way and change this to this Ah, uh, 
messing up here. What's wrong with my formula? So, transaction amount minus product price. Okay, so now we're showing it as a negative. That's what I wanted. So the difference um, between what's uh, sold and what the price should have been is it was sold for $5 less than it should have been. This one was sold for $23 less and this one for $4.50 less. All right, so we can have a status field and that formula is going to be if our product price is greater than the transaction amount, it's going to show an alert. And yes, you can even use emojis in your formula. You could just paste it in here and it makes it stand out a little bit more. So now uh, we can make a new view and let's say uh, sales with alerts and we're going to filter and just show uh, status contains alerts and then you could see here we can either leave all these fields um, or hide them but that will show us uh, the specific ones that have uh, some kind of problem with them all right, so the next thing we're going to do is we can come over here um, back into sales data, sales staff, excuse me. So let's say here we, uh, we just want to see the product that was sold. We don't want this full primary key. We can do a lookup field and we're going to look up data coming from the product sold linked field and we just want to actually pull the name of the product sold. So now it takes out that extra information and we can hide this and make this a little more neat and clean. We could say, uh, let's change this to all sales. And then we have that nice and neat. A couple other fields we can add into the sales staff table is uh, we've created an item sold and we've selected count and it's going to count the products sold and that can give you a total for each person over here. And then we can also do this roll up field and we're going to roll up the number or the product sold and the total transaction amount and the value we want is the sum. So this is going to show us these four products that were sold by Tim Thumb have a total amount of 152. So you could see right away that even though Tim sold more products, the products he sold were worth less. Um, Christy sold less products, but the total of all the products she sold were more. So you can start to get some insights. There's lots of different uh, fields you can uh, start pulling in here, and that's uh, strictly because of the linking. And you're starting to um, pull in the important information and see some insights into your data. So I hope that was helpful.